Hello, everyone, and welcome to RTP Behind the Scenes. In this episode, uh, as promised, I'm going to take you through what the keyboards do when we play The Trees and Xanadu live. Now, the this is a bit of a project song, um, and we, we take things from the exit stage left version of the song and a couple other live versions and, and push them in there together and come up with our version. So, without further ado, let's get into The Trees. So, in The Trees there aren't any keyboard parts until the keyboard solo. And so what you'll hear is the bass is going to do this little run. And on that last B, I'm going to be hitting the Taurus pedal B at the same time. So it'll sound something like this. And then I go directly into the solo part. Now, one thing, once I do that, when I hit that B, and then I start playing the solo, I have to change the Taurus pedals, or the PK-5s, to be the other sound, the sound that happens during the guitar solo. Right? And so then, once this keyboard solo is done, We move down to the keyboards here, and I've got the Taurus pedal sound here. And this is going to be playing while the guitar is playing an arpeggiated part. And then, after it's played this twice, I need to add this sound here. But this is too loud, right? This is the solo keyboard sound. And so, rather than try and adjust the volume and you know do that while we're trying to play live, what I did was I sampled this sound, actually this sound here, and this, together, layered it, mixed it properly, and then placed it up here on the keyboards. So in the beginning of that section, I'll be playing here. And then when we go to the second half of the section, I'll be playing it up here, where you can hear both of those sounds. And I've got it here, rather than on the Taurus pedals, on the PK-5s, because of the D here. So this D is higher than the A and the B, right? But I don't have a D on the pedals, I only go up to C. So A, B, A, I'd have to go down to D. So I placed it here so I could actually hit that note properly. So then once that's done, I would go into the bass riff before the guitar solo. Right, play that a couple times and the guitar solo comes in. Now on exit stage left, I'll be playing the pedals underneath that riff while the guitar is soloing. So it'll be like. That sound is a little intrusive. They did it live, and so when we do songs from that era, like when we do a whole album from that era, or like a whole show from that era, I'll play that whole section. So once that whole section is over, we go back to the end of the song, and then at the very end of the song, instead of Hatchet, saw. So at that point, the guitar starts doing an arpeggiated thing. So Bill's got this uh, thing that he does. And while he's doing that, I want to add a little bit of ambiance, if you will. And so there's going to be some trees and birds and things showing up on the video screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I've got a sample down here, my, uh, my bird loop, if you will. It's got water and it's got birds. And so I'll play that. But even that, that's a little bit dull by itself. And so I've got, on these other keys right up above it, I've got other bird sounds that I add in. Right? And so I'll mix these in while this is going. And Bill's playing his little pretty arpeggio. And at some point, he's going to wind down. And so I'll be, I'll be holding this. And he's winding down, and I have to start playing the bass. So step on the sustain pedal to keep that going. And then play my part. Eventually we end on E. And now at this point, three things have to happen. I need to keep this going. If I, if I let go of the pedal, this is going to stop. So I need to keep this going. So I'm going to hit it again with my finger to start it up again, and then let go of the, of the pedal. The next thing I have to do is I need to switch to Xanadu patch, because I'm in the trees patch right now. So up here on the, um, on the 12 steps, I step to change patches to Xanadu, and this note 
is actually still on the trees, but until I let go, it's going to keep playing. So the third thing I have to do, now that I'm in Xanadu, is, well, start the note. And then we can let the, the birds go away. Now this note is an E. I played it down on the C, and that's because I've got other bass sounds playing up here. So I can't put it on the E. I've got it down there. Also, there's a different video clip that plays when I hit this C, this E, versus when I hit the E to start the big section in the intro. So at this point, Bill needs to change guitars. Bill has to go and get his double neck. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a note up here on the keyboard. So it's going to be a sound like, what are these sounds? But what I have to do is I have to have that sound slide all the way down an octave to this note. So to do that, what I have is over here on the, on the knobs, my first knob here has what we call portamento, or glide, attached to it. And so I, what I can do is I can turn the glide all the way up. But I want to make sure that it fades in properly and fades out. So the second knob is my volume. So I turn the volume all the way down. Then I can start the note here. Turn my glide all the way up, and you'll hear what this sounds like in just a second. And then fade in with the volume. And then after a sufficiently dramatic pause, I start going down. And then while it's going down, I can bring that glide back down to where it needs to be. So when I play this note next time, I don't have that long glide. And then I can fade that note out. And then I'm done. Now, I'm almost done. I have to now remember to turn the volume back up so I actually have that keyboard sound later in the song. And so that's it for the in, for the end of the trees getting into Xanadu. Now Bill is playing his volume swells. I go change to my double neck and get a spine operation. And then when I come back, I need to start adding wind noise. So you'll know Getty did this all the time. Um, I've got some wind noise sampled right here on this E. So I will hit that. And then the resonance filter I've got on this uh, button right here. And so you can barely hear it now, but when I start opening up the filter, you can hear the wind and noise, right? And so I'll play around with this like Eddie did. A lot while, while Bill is, you know, fooling around over on, on his side. And then when he is done, when he's winding down, he's gonna start that intro arpeggio, and he's gonna start fading that in. At that point, I need to be ready once again to do three things. So I need to hit a sample for wind noise, because this wind noise is going to go away when I let go, right? It's going to fade away. But we need this wind noise to continue throughout the, the whole intro of the song. So I have a sample, a long sample on this E right here, that is that is that wind noise with, you know, swirling around and doing all sorts of stuff while we play all those big uh, unison hits. So when I'm ready, I'm going to need to hit this at exactly the right time. I'm going to need to hit the E down here on the PK-5s for the first big bass pedal hit. I also need to actually hit the bass. I need to play the E on the bass all, all at the same time. So I'm holding it pretty much like this. And then you'll hear Tom with brum bum brum bum brum bum bum And so you hear all that going. You also hear that noise, that bigger bass sound. And then... And we'll play that whole thing three times. Bill also plays on his pedals over here. He'll play the other notes that go along with it the second and third time. So... Until we get to the very end. And you can hear that wind noise still going in the background. So when finally everything is done... Then we turn that off, and then we're off playing the song with just guitars and bass and drums. So then the keys are done until Bill starts playing on the 12 string. Until he starts playing that riff. So I'm going to be coming in on bass. And when I come in on bass with my E, my low E, what I'm going to be playing on keyboards, I have to make sure I'm at the poly setting on the keyboard, so I have the upper, upper keyboard sounds. I'm going to be playing... Now, 
if you know the song, you may have seen something weird with what I just did there. And that is, the notes there are supposed to be B, A, and G sharp. And what I was playing was B flat, A flat, and G flat. So what I did, I took the notes, those are the correct notes, that is B, A, G sharp. I moved them down onto the black pedals. The reason I did that, well, it's twofold. One, it keeps everything that I'm going to be playing later on all on black notes. And the reason I do that is because in low light situations, it's actually really challenging to be able to be playing a double neck, look down and see these pedals down here, the B, A, and G sharp. If I know it's all going to be on black notes, I can be, I can be playing up here. It's a lot easier to see and just to, to feel my way around if I can't see. And either low light or sometimes blinding light, one or the other, it happens on stage a lot. And so between all the things I have to look around and do, it makes it's kind of a peace of mind thing to just say, I know it's going to be... Right? I just know what's going to be there. And then also later on, you'll see I'm going to stay up there for the next section of the song. So the next section of the song, speaking of, is when we get into the first verse. Now, we do the first verse. Uh, the bass part is playing... And what I'm going to be playing on the pedals is E and F sharp. E and F sharp I have moved down to these pedals here, the D flat and E flat. And again, that's, so now the entire um, verse is all going to be up here on the black notes. The other reason I did this is that we have different video running at different times. So I need to be, I need to have the E not be here. I need to have the E here to trigger the correct video for that part of the song. So that's it as far as keyboards up until we get to, I guess you want to call it the chorus or the next section in the song. So we played the, we play that verse, the Seek the Sacred River Elf. Part, and then at the very end, and now with that, I switch back down to bass. I'm not going to need the poly anymore for the song. That's that we're done with the intro, and then we go into that section. So the the next keyboard part is going to be in in the chorus after Zana do. So after Zana do. We come in with and then fade out. And you'll notice this is the same sound that I had in the very beginning of the song. The It's the same it's the same sound. Um, all I've done is add and when I'm up higher a little bit of modulation, a little bit of vibrato. And you can still hear there's a little bit of glide, but not nearly as much as what there was in the beginning of the song. So what ended up happening, what I did was my my button, my knob down here, when I bring it down to zero, I actually have zero set for not zero on the glide. The glide is actually at a very little bit. We'll say at about, uh, I don't know, 15%. Instead of the 100% it was when it's up here. Right, so down here it's still it's still it's still not at complete zero, but as far as the knob is concerned, it is at zero. So that way, I don't have to try and guess or be very precise when we're playing this stuff live, because I have to do that pretty much immediately. Right, I, my I don't have much time to think about what I'm playing, what I'm moving, excuse me, around with all the knobs. So that is the end of this section. This part repeats a couple times, and then we get into the end of the song. <laughs> so the end of the song, we're going to be playing. And at that point, I've got a lot of switching around to do. So I, I play that E, and then Bill is going to keep on playing his part. At that point, I need to get ready. i got a lot of switching. I have to play a keyboard note. I'm going to have to switch patches because the pedal parts that I have, the pedal sounds, need to be different. So I'll be switching patches. I'm also going to, at some point, have to grab a pick to be able to play the guitar part, but we won't worry about that for this video. So I... 
um, am ready. He's playing his guitar part. I come in with the... Step on the pedal to keep it going. Then, so you can don't have to listen to that drone on while I, I explain. I'm going to be holding this, the pedal um, to keep that note playing. I am then going to have to switch to the other patch, the second Xanadu patch that I have. Which, well, I'll have to let up on the pedal to do that. That'll start fading away. I'm then going to start playing the guitar, playing the chords on the guitar, the E to F sharp chords, and I'm going to be playing a different set of sounds, and this is going to be actually, for once in this song on the pedals, it's going to be the correct notes, the E, F sharp. So I'll be playing that underneath the guitar while I'm playing the guitar part. Um, after that, after that whole section, I'm switching back to bass really quick and then playing just regular Taurus pedals, which I have set down here on the low C because these are all taken up with that other sound. Right? And so we play that a couple more times. And then while this is ringing out, I'm going to play on the guitar. Right? And then the the rest of the rest of that ending. So, at the very last note of that, right when I finish that final little guitar riff, everything gets quiet. And then last big note, which is just me playing E as loudly as I can, stepping on this E up here. And why that E? Two reasons. One, you can hear it fades out slowly. So it's, it'll, it'll keep the sound going. And two, because there is another video that needs to be hit here. So if you'll count, I have three low E's um, on this particular configuration. I have the one under the guitar solo with, with the higher note. I have just the straight up Taurus pedal that I can play. And then I have the final Taurus pedal that has some reverb and delay on it. So when I let go, it rings out for a lot longer. This one is the one that's triggering that final video. And so then we take a deep breath and um, <laughs> and go see a chiropractor after playing for 11, 12 minutes with that double neck on. So that's it. That is Xanadu in a nutshell. Um, I hope this was entertaining or interesting. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave comments either here in YouTube or uh, if you came here on Facebook, you can leave uh, comments there and ask questions. And I'll monitor and try and answer them if I can. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. Everybody have a good night. And we will talk to you later.